a movie that's flying around, and I use that advisedly, uh -huh. called Iron Man that uh, I saw, I think Marsha saw also. Yes, indeed. And we can discuss. Because you know about Batman. Did, did you know this figure, Iron no, Man? No, but I've, I'm not into those people. You're not. Was Batman a Marvel comic? No, no, DC it was called. DC. But anyway. And where was Superman? I think that was DC also. Okay. The beginning of the movie is absolutely wonderful. Robert Downey, who plays, is just superb. The character is wonderful. It's hardly necessary to describe this at this stage. Well, let's do it quickly, one sentence. He's a... Arms he's, dealer. He's a playboy arms dealer. In the original magazine, he was based deliberately on how it used. Yes, even the backstory, the fact that his father died and he had to take over the business. Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt. Continue. What did you mean to do? <laughs> I meant to <laughs> elucidate what you were saying. Okay, he goes to uh, Afghanistan to make a demo of a new missile thing they've done that gets goofed up and he gets captured. He manages to make this iron suit while they think he's making a uh, missile launcher for them. Yes. And with the aid of that, he wreaks havoc, escapes, comes back home, and then he has a change of heart. It never had occurred to it him. It never occurred to him before. Before that, that his arms were sold to the bad guys or as the well guys. as the so-called good guys. No, anyway, he has a revelation, and now he doesn't want to make arms anymore. Yes. And so therefore, Jeff Bridges, who's in the movie... Was his father's best friend and, and took over the... And the, the sort of the general manager yeah. of the company. He definitely does not like the idea of giving There's up arms. And so there's, so there's the usual thing of him trying to kill or stop uh, Robert Downey. Yes. And so it ends with them having a big clanking fight together. Yes. And that's the end of the movie. Okay. People say this, the effects are just fantastic. They are. I didn't find them fantastic. Oh, no. I, I, I mean, I know. To me, big fireballs when things blow up. I mean, haven't you seen that? Yes. That, but how about me, when he flies see, in the sky? That's, that's, oh, that's, there's and nothing he's easier. attacked by two... Uh, American fighter planes, right? Yeah, but That's kind of funny. But the biggest thing is that the brilliance of casting Robert Downey Jr. He's a wonderful actor, and we would like to go and see him. And also, it has Gwyneth Paltrow. Adorable. She's adorable. And she plays the secretary. With a darling title, name. Pepper Potts. Pepper Potts. Is her name, and she wears little black dresses, and extremely high heels, which she manages to run when she's being chased by bad people, which is wonderful. I kind of like that this bad guy, compared with most movies, uh -huh. is such a two-bit bad guy. <laughs> and I mean, Smersh, at least in the Bond movies, wanted to control the world. <clears throat> this bad guy, he's very mean. He kicks people when they're on the ground, but all he seems to do is terrorize one village. Yes. And there's one line saying, ah, if I had this, I could control Asia. <laughs> there's no, I don't believe this guy could control East Orange, New Jersey. The one thing about the script, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was said twice as they are in comic books. There are no real surprises in the movie. Maybe that's all. because of the odd way it was written. But well, they have four credits. There were two teams of writers uh -huh. who, who wrote simultaneously and never met each other even. So that's why everything is said twice. I was disappointed in the movie, let me tell you. Okay. I expected, for everything I'd read, I thought I was going to just say, this is the greatest. Mm -hmm. And for the first 30 minutes or so, the establishment of the character in Las Vegas with the girls. Yeah, is, very quickly, you know who he is. It's a right? wonderful job, a wonderful writing job that way. He breaks out, he comes back, and he builds a real iron suit, mm -hmm. much better than the one that he built in uh, the Taliban cave. From that moment on, the picture to me got really quite boring. A lot of mechanical things to watch them putting things together. Yeah, and with I, no other actor in the scene. A hero has to be vulnerable in some way or there's no suspense. This guy with bullets don't harm him. He has flamethrowers in his fingers and he has something plasma, something comes out of his feet. The one possible vulnerability is what appears to be an artificial heart. And at one stage, to me the we only don't want to spoil the movie. I don't care about spoiling the movie. Okay. The, the only interesting plot point, and I'm not going to say what it is, the villain uh, pulls out his heart yeah. and chuckles to die. And how, is, how that doesn't kill him, I thought it was a clever plot point. Are all the hero movies accepting or letting everyone know that you little people aren't able to take care of yourselves. That's a Martian view. I don't mean for the planet up there. I mean Martian has <laughs> a view. Well, isn't it true? No, it's got nothing to do with the little people taking Why? care but of themselves. Nobody, nobody takes care of themselves. They all are waiting for 
the Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and now Iron Man. They take I, did, I didn't read comic books. As, I maybe they didn't have comic books. They I guess we were books. still reading uh, hieroglyphics, right? Aren't they always that story? It's one man who's going to save us so that the... One man is saving them from one particular bad man. Oh, okay. It's got nothing to do with the texture of daily life. Superheroes attack supervillains. Because I wrote the television version of Batman. People always often come to me and say, well, you, you must be an expert on the genre. You know this. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. I am a hated, despised character by comic book fans because not taking Batman seriously. In other words, oh. I did it as comic camp. And these people, these comic book people take these very seriously as social figures. And then I did Flash Gordon and also made fun of it. If I had been sitting on an aisle seat, I would not have stayed to the end. Someone else told me today, they said, I loved it up, but why did I have to see something that I knew was That's what I'm happen? saying. It's just going to be a b big clanking, clonking fight. With, you know, with a lot of cuts. And there was no suspense. Yes, not even when, when Jeff Bridges, you discover who Jeff Bridges really is. I wasn't listening. Who is he? He's a villain. I know he's a villain. Yeah. But, but of course he's, he's the villain. Did you see his haircut? It is a pure entertainment. I am an enormous fan of Robert Downey, and I won't, would see any picture that he is in. Clear to land. Okay. <laughs>